Hi, this is Vanessa with the latest Tazia News, and here they are. Maria Fernanda Lai is the first Timorese woman to be elected as the Speaker of the National Parliament on June 22, 2023. On June 22, 2022, Timor-Leste new members of 6th Legislature has officially took calls for the period of 2023-2028. And Maria Fernanda Lai was elected as the Speaker in the first plenary session of the same day. Fernanda Lai is the first Timorese woman to take the role as the Parliament Speaker. According to the information obtained, Fernanda Lai was nominated by her own party, CNRT, which won the 2023 parliamentary elections. The reason for Fernanda Lai's nomination by the CNRT is that her ability and competence, as well as her political courage. And in addition, it's a commitment of the CNRT party to uphold women's equality to be able to lead one of the state institutions. Maria Fernanda Lai pursued her political career as the member of the CNRT party and she gained her first seat in the Timor-Leste National Parliament in 2007 election, having taken office on 6th of August 2007 until now. During her time in Parliament, she has served in leadership roles on various commissions and since 2010 she has served as the National Group Secretary in the Parliamentary Assembly of the Community of Portuguese-speaking countries. She also chaired the Women's Network from 2010 to 2015. Indonesia calls for collaboration with Malaysia fight discrimination against palm oil. Indonesia's President Joko Widodo called for better collaboration with neighboring Malaysia to fight what he called discrimination against their country's palm oil products. Collaboration to fight discrimination against palm oil and other commodities, I really appreciated that there was a joint mission, Indonesia and Malaysia. In Brussels recently, this kind of collaboration must be strengthened. We don't want commodities produced by Malaysia and Indonesia to be discriminated against in other countries. Indonesia and Malaysia are the world's top two producers and exporters of palm oil, a community used in everything from lipstick to pizza. His comments come after the European Union passed a law this year banning imports of commodities, links to deforestation, a move that is expected to hurt exports of palm oil to the bloc. Malaysia has called the new law unjust and has said that it is working with Indonesia to consider an appropriate response to the law. United States and Singapore share pessimism on Myanmar's situation. First one goes to Simon Lewis with Reuters. Thank you. There has been no sign of improvement in Myanmar since the 2021 coup. Singaporean Foreign Minister Vivian Balakrishnan with United States Secretary of State Anthony Blinken in Washington shared his counterpart's pessimism on the situation in Myanmar. Myanmar has been roiled by violence since the coup, with the military battling on multiple fronts to try to crush an armed pro-democracy resistant movement formed in response to the crackdown. Uh, the ASEAN chair, Indonesia, is engaging across a wide spectrum of stakeholders. And the key point is this. You do need everyone ultimately to sit down and negotiate. I don't know how long it will take. The last time it took 25 years for some form of democratic transition to occur in Myanmar. I hope it won't take that long. But it's very important for the rest of us, whilst we are in favor of reconciliation, we're in favor of more dialogue, we obviously want to make sure that the level of violence goes down. And certainly from Singapore's perspective, our policy is that we should all do our best to make sure arms or even dual use items which can be used to inflict harm and injury on civilians should be proscribed. Human rights and some United Nations experts have accused the military of committing widespread atrocities. The junta says it is fighting terrorists who aim to destroy the country. Australian accused of drunken attacks deported from Indonesia. <laughs> 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 
Indonesian officials announced that an Australian man accused of assaulting people while drunk will be deported after being freed from jail. An immigration official said Bodimani Risby Jones will be placed in immigration detention in Melabo City while waiting for travel arrangements to be finalized by the Australian Embassy. Risby Jones was detained in late April after police accused of him assaulting several people near a surf resort in Aceh province while drunk. The case did not go to court after he apologized to the victims, with officials saying he also reached a settlement with one of them. The 23-year-old told the news conference that he was really relieved and happy to be released after he had made a fool of himself, in comments reported by The Guardian. Indonesian president offers high investment returns at new capital city. Indonesia's president, Joko Widodo, promoted his country's planned new 32 billion US dollar capital to global investors and promised high investment returns. Widodo said that Indonesia's economy, which is growing steadily around 5% coupled with low inflation, should be enough to convince investors. So, I suggest you, don't wait too long. Don't just sit and watch. This is a golden opportunity that is very captivating in Indonesia, which all of you can be part of. Southeast Asia's largest economy is building a smart city spanning nearly 260,000 hectares or 642,474 acres in the jungles of Borneo Island to replace the sinking capital of Jakarta on Java Island. Jakarta has pledged that only 20% of the total construction of coast of Nusantara will be borne by the state budget, with the remaining coming from private investors. Indonesia launched SpaceX satellite to boost internet connectivity. Three, two, one, ignition. Indonesia and Elon Musk's rocket company SpaceX launched the country's largest telecommunications satellite from the United States in a $540 million project intended to link up remote corners of the archipelago to the Internet. The 4.5-ton satellite of the Republic of Indonesia, Satria-1, was built by the Thales Alene Space and deployed into orbit from Florida by SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket, which then returned to an offshore site in a precision landing. With that call out, we know that Falcon 9... The Indonesian government said the satellite will occupy the orbital slot above Indonesia's eastern Papua region. It has a throughput capacity of 150 gigabytes per second and will provide internet access to 50,000 public service points. Roughly two-thirds of Indonesia's 280 million population already use the internet, but connectivity is limited in far-flung, underdeveloped eastern islands of the Southeast Asian country. Protesters rally against Japan's military expansion. A number of Japanese gathered in front of the National Diet in Tokyo to protest against the country's bill to increase defense spending and express strong concerns and opposition to the country's frequent interaction with NATO. The House of Councillors of Japan approved a bill to create a pool of funds to cover part of the substantial increase in defense spending, which provides a legal guarantee for Japanese government's attempt to increase defense spending. Some protesters said Japan's extravagant spending on defense will only increase its people's burden as people are facing many livelihood problems. <laughs> The increase of defense spending in Japan will pose a threat to neighboring countries. The increase in military strength is in fact preparing for war, and Japan will no longer maintain peaceful and friendly relations with its neighboring countries. <laughs> Meanwhile, protesters were worried about the country's military expansion and closer relationship with NATO, which runs counter to peace and goes against the Constitution's Article 9 that renounces war and prohibits Japan from possessing war potential such as military forces. South Korea claimer against Japan's radioactive wastewater discharge. More than 3,000 South Korean fishermen gathered near the parliamentary building in Seoul to protest Japan's planned discharge of radioactive wastewater from its crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant into the Pacific Ocean. 
The fishermen held signs that read, desperately opposed of the Fukushima radioactive contaminated water discharge into the sea and SOS Pacific Ocean. Japan's discharge of nuclear contaminated water into the sea is like a thunderbolt for the fishermen and consumers engaged in fishing. And it is a great disaster for the marine ecological environment, marine life and the life and health of people all over the world. The Association of the Fishermen in a statement said that the Japanese government should come up with solutions including long-term storage on land rather than dump the radioactive water that will destroy all the life in the Pacific Ocean and all fishermen living on it. Fishermen and environmental activists called on the Japanese government to store contaminated water underground for an extended period of time or to harden it as a concrete. Some expressed discontent over the plan. China calls for constructs efforts in achieving peace stability in Sudan. China's representative at the 53rd regular session of the Human Rights Council said the United Nations Human Rights Council should support regional organizations to play a constructive role in efforts to achieve peace and stability in Sudan. Chen added, despite the country's complicated domestic situation, the Sudanese government is still committed to protecting human rights and insists on cooperating with the United Nations Human Rights Mechanism. Which deserves recognition to achieve peace and stability in Sudan, it is necessary to uphold the Sudanese-led and Sudanese-owned principle and ultimately rely on the Sudanese people themselves to find a solution through the rule of law. Meanwhile, he also claimed that China supports of the African Union and other regional organizations to continue to play their roles. The Human Rights Council should support regional organizations to play a constructive role and avoid complicating the situation. The establishment of the country mandate without the consent of the government concerned will not help improve the local situation and will only backfire in the end. Thank you very much for watching everyone. We will see you again soon. Have a lovely weekend. Stay safe and stay healthy.